Hello everyone. My name is Vipul Jain and today in this video I will be showcasing that how you can create a pop-up or alert box kind of functionality using Power Apps Canvas app. So in this video I will show you that how you can create a model pop-up or kind of a pop-up or alert, alert box and we will be using here global and contextual variables and collection. So basically, first of all, we will create a collection dynamically and display it in a vertical gallery. We will add a trash icon and on the click of the trash icon, that particular item will be deleted. And after that, as a third part of this video, I will show you that directly deleting the item without asking for any confirmation from the user is not a good user experience. So we will create a model pop-up. So let's see this in action. So I am going to the Power Apps environment. This is the same Power Apps crash course, which I am using for this particular Power Apps playlist. So I've created a screen SCR underscore pop-up and I've added a, just a header pop-up or alert box in Power Apps. So first of all, we will create a collection. So for that, I have already added some sample data. So I will be using this sample data to create the collection. So for creating the collection, now you already know that how we can create the collection. We can create the collection on the app on start property, on the click of a button, on the visible property of the screen and so on. So for this particular video, what I will be doing, I will go to the app. I will choose the on start property, the on start property of the app. And on this on start property of the app, I will be creating a collection. So for creating the collection, you can definitely use the function clear collect. So I'm using this function clear collect. It will ask for a collection. Uh, I can paste the collection, which I copied from the notepad. And what you have to do, your collection is created. Just close the bracket and that's it. So you see here, I have created the collection, given the collection as a name, collection customer, and then specified the data for that particular collection this i am using a sample data definitely you can do the format text and that is how your clear collect collection will look like this i am creating on the app on start property all right at the same time i want to get the logged in user full name so i can create another variable here using the set function and i will say the variable name to be as where let's say display name and you can use the user function user dot full name that is how you can get the full name of the current logged in user so on the app on start property what we have done we have created a collection with the name called customer this is some sample data or json which i have added and another thing we have created a variable using the set function the variable name is where display name since we have created this on the app on start, so you can definitely run this uh, on start property. For this, you have to go to app, click on three dots and click on run on start. So that is how your collection and your variable will be created when you click on run on start. All right. Now on this screen, what we are going to do is we'll go back to our screen. We will add a vertical gallery here. So I've added the vertical gallery and I will select the data source as now we already have the collection. Collection is collection of customer. Okay. So I have added a gallery. Let's align it a little bit and let's make some changes in the properties or the layout of this gallery. So layout I'm selecting as title and subtitle and height. You can definitely select whatever you want. Then uh, label definitely you can change because as of now both of them are showing the invoice number so what you can do is that one of them this is the invoice number and again this is the invoice number both of them are showing as of now the invoice number okay so one of them you can keep it as the customer number so I am keeping it as customer this item dot customer number or customer number yes so this I have changed the property to customer number. Now you see if I run this app, I can see the customer number, I can see the invoice number. Now from where this invoice number or customer number properties are coming, if I show you my sample uh, collection data from which I have created the collection, it is having the two properties, customer number and the invoice number. 
so that's why i was able to get those properties in the gallery what i'm going to do is i don't want this arrow icon so i can delete this i have deleted this arrow icon and the first functionality which i want to show you is adding the trash icon so i will insert a trash icon and before that it's always good to select the first card of the gallery control so i'm selecting the first card now i am inserting a trash icon so you see i have inserted a trash icon here and on the in on the click of this trash icon what i want to achieve is that i want to delete the data this is the first part which i wanted to showcase in the first part what we are going to do is directly we are going to delete this item if this trash icon is clicked right so what we can do just select the trash icon on the on select property of the trash icon what you can use there is a function called remove so just use the remove function and from where you want to remove from the collection and the collection which you have created is collection of customer comma which item is the this item which you want to delete simple formula using the remove function now let's see this in action now i have a gallery having some data and in the gallery corresponding to every data every record i have a trash icon let's say 1524 the moment user clicks on this trash icon this gets deleted from the collection you can see here similarly if i want to delete this 4259 from the collection let's delete it and the 4259 item or record will be deleted directly so this is one part of this video that how you can basically delete the items from the collection but as per me this is not a good user experience why because this is not giving a warning message to the user that hey do you want really want to delete this item if they click on confirm or okay then only the item should be deleted and for that functionality we are going to see in this video now that how to create a pop up or kind of a alert box as a confirmation or a warning message to the user do you really want to delete this particular item so now we'll see that that how to create the model pop up so let me go back to my screen this is the screen sr pop up this is gallery 2 which i have added and inside the gallery i have just added the trash icon okay now what we are going to do is since we have to create the model pop up we don't want really don't want to uh, user to directly delete by clicking on this so something we have to change on the on select property of the trash icon that is for sure right because if we we'll keep the same function remove again on the click of the trash icon the remove will be called which we don't want now we want to create a model pop up we want to display a model pop up to the user so before that let me run the run on start so that i have the complete collection i again go to the screen all right so on the click of the trash icon let's remove this first of all uh, function which we have added so what we are going to do is now there is something called update context which will help you to create the variable having the scope of the current screen please remember that when you create a variable using update context update i am just writing update context if you create a variable using update context its particular scope its particular scope is limited to that screen only okay now what i want that when user clicks on this trash icon a pop up or a alert box should open so what i am doing is i am creating a variable here using the update context and i am setting its default property as true so i am saying update context where pop up value is true this is the by default property so whenever this trash icon will be called first of all this variable will be created with the default value as true okay now to create the pop up now the most important part for this particular video precisely that how to create a pop up pop up kind of functionality or look and feel in power apps okay so to create the pop up what i'm doing what i'm going to do is i've selected the screen and i'm going to insert some controls now so please watch very closely so first of all i am going to insert a rectangle a rectangle control okay so do you see this this rectangle control i have added and now i will going to change some properties of this rectangle control okay so for this rectangle control first of all i am going to rename it i let's say i rename is rectangle underscore background so i've just renamed the rectangle control so that we are very well aware that which rectangle we are working with okay now size of this rectangle control 
Now for the size, I am going to change the height and width of this particular rectangle control. So you can see on the properties right hand side, there is property called width. Width I am going to let's say somewhat going to give 750. Okay, so width or maybe it's more so 745, something like that. I have given the width as 745 and height also I am going to change. So height also you can give as let's say for example 700. So that it basically completely covers your uh, vertical gallery which you have added at the background. Okay, so this is one thing but currently it is uh, hiding our vertical gallery. So there is also something called fill property fill property of this rectangle and you can change the color code so that I, I'm making it light so that our vertical gallery is visible. So I gave it 166 comma 166 comma 166 and the last parameter is just for opacity. I'm making it 0.5. Great. So this is my rectangle control which I've added the one rectangle control. Now on the same screen, I'm going to insert one more rectangle control which will work as a pop-up for us. And for this particular rectangle control, I'm going to rename it first of all. So let's rename this uh, rectangle also. So I will say rectangle underscore, let's say four round. So this will be the rectangle which will come into front. That's why I've renamed it as rectangle four round. Again, we have to change the height and width of this particular uh, rectangle. So let's check what we have given the width of this rectangle as 685. So I will give it as again similar 685. So this is the width of this particular. Maybe we can give it less 680 probably. All right. And what about the height? So height, let's say I give it as 350, the half of the background rectangle. All right. So this is looking good. Now similarly, you have to change the color. So I want to make it complete white. Again, you have to go to the fill color property. So fill color property of this particular foreground rectangle. I want since I want to make it white. So for white, the RGBA color is 255. So 255, 255. Again, 255 because I want to make it white. And opacity, let me keep it one so it's look white only. All right. So my this rectangle is also ready and for border thickness, I want to give the border thickness also. Let's give the border thickness as one so that I can see the rectangle very clearly. All right, so this I have added. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one text label here so, so that I can give some message to the user. I can put it here and whatever text you want to write in this text label, definitely you can write the text. But before that, I want to rename it LBL underscore, let's say, pop-up. I'm just renaming the controls. It's always good, always good practice to rename the controls. Okay. Font size, let's say increase a little bit so that it's clearly visible. Font weight you can give it semi-bold or probably a semi-bold and then text alignment also you can give it as center. Right. So in this particular text, the text property of this label, what I want to show to the user is we have created one variable. So where, wh what was the variable? Where display name of the logged in user. All right, of the logged in user, we use this, and then I can say that please, please click delete, which we are going to add the button. We are going to add please click delete to confirm deletion to confirm deletion of maybe something, some text, some random text you can add. All right, and if you want to give the also the number which user is uh, basically trying to delete, so you can also uh, add that because that will come from your gallery, right? So this you can add using ampersand. Using ampersand, you can say that gallery. What is the gallery we are using here? Gallery two dot selected. Gallery two dot selected dot invoice number. And let's increase this a little bit. Yep. So you see here, if I run this app, Vipul Jain, please click delete to confirm deletion of this invoice. Maybe I can give some space over here so that so that it looks uh, a little bit good. So I can keep this here and put it here, something like this. So now you see here, 
Vipul Jain, please click delete to confirm deletion of the invoice, particular invoice which is selected as of now in the gallery. All right. So this is how we are creating the pop-up. Now what we are going to do is now we are just going to add two buttons, button control. One will be the delete and one will be the cancel button. It's very simple, right? So now I'm going to add one button. I'm going to add one more button. That's it. These are the two buttons which I've added. This button I will say btn underscore delete. This button, particular this button, it's not even getting selected. So you can definitely select it from your screen. This I will say btn underscore cancel. All right. So what we have done, or maybe you can uh, probably change the text property also for these buttons. So this is cancel. So I've added a cancel button. And after that, you can also change the color. Let's say I want to delete it, keep it orange. This is delete, cancel. And this is the text property of this button as delete. So one is cancel button, another is delete button. And let's change the background color. Let's change it to green. And for this particular button, delete, let me select this button and let's change the text again to cancel all right now you see how your pop-up is looking so it is giving the logged in username it is giving the message confirmation message to the user that really do you want to delete it or you want to cancel it okay now just what we have to write that on the delete function now we have to write which we were writing earlier on the trash icon right so on the on select property for the button there is a property called on select property select the on select property and now you can definitely write the same formula earlier which you was writing on the trash icon with some changes so what you will write here you will again use the remove function and remove from where from the collection so our collection is collection of customer but this time what you want to delete it's not like the item directly you want to delete it's the item which has been selected in the gallery right so for that you can use the lookup function so i want to do the lookup where you want to do the lookup basically so you want to do the lookup in the same collection which is collection of customer and you have to provide expression or a condition which you want to delete so i can say customer name or customer number basically customer number is equal to gallery 2 so my, in my case it's gallery 2 dot selected dot customer number this is the condition which will allow me to select the item which I want to delete. Once the item is deleted, I just want what I want to do is I want to update the context of the variable which I have created. So I'm updating the context so I can use update context here and I will say the variable which I've created, which is where pop up and I'm making it value again false because my work has been done. Right. So on the click of the delete delete uh, button, what we have uh, done is, let me show you again. So first I'm removing from the collection. I'm using the lookup that which item needs to be deleted. And then I'm, I'm updating the context of the variable. Similarly for the cancel button, just select the on select property, select the on select properties. And what you can do is just update the context of the variable which we have created. The variable which we have created is where pop-up and for this also I'm setting it value to false. All right. Now the last piece, since every time this pop-up is visible, we only want this pop-up to be visible when someone has cl uh, clicked on the trash icon and once the delete, delete is clicked, so the trash icon should go or this pop-up should go. So basically what we can do is the controls which we have uh, created on this particular pop-up, what are those controls? So this is label control, two buttons, and two rectangle. So these are the controls which we have created for the pop-up. What you can do is you can group them. So just group them. Okay, so a group will be created. You can see group two is created. They are part of the same group now. And what you have to do finally is that for the group, there is a visible property. And for the visible property, you can just specify 
var popup the variable which you have created for the update context using the update context so all right this is done so now let's see this in action let's run the app if i click on this 2338 item i click on the trash icon it asks me that please click delete to confirm deletion if i click on cancel you see nothing happens but if i click on delete it deletes the particular item or record from the collection let's see one more time i want to delete this 1530 i click on the trash icon i click on cancel nothing happens in the collection if i click on again trash icon a model pop up or a confirmation warning message opens which has delete and cancel buttons the user clicks on delete and that particular item gets deleted from the collection so that's all in this video keep watching keep learning keep commenting thank you